Hello everyone, this is Vicki Verley. Thank you so much for joining me for your monthly tarot scopes. These monthly mini readings offer a glimpse into what it's really like to have a personal consultation with me. A private reading is much more personal and in-depth. I psychically tune into your energy and get visions and impressions that are specific only to you. If you would like to order a personal reading from me, or check out some of the other products and services that I offer, you can do so by checking out the link below. And now without further ado, on to the reading. Virgo. Hello Virgo. This is Vicki Verley, the Rock and Roll Prophetess. And welcome to your April 2014 Tarot Scope and Astrology Mini Reading. Alright, let's just get right into it. I'm going to start shuffling up the cards and tuning in. Well, I'm not tuning in, but I'm going to shuffle up the cards and see what's going to come out here. Hmm. All right, I'm going to keep going. Alright. Alright. Okay. Well, you know, that Seven of Cups, a lot of people put a negative spin on the Seven of Cups. I really don't. I use that card as a visualization card. And it's about what you're dreaming of is coming true. and it's But it's for good or ill. And it's like a law of attraction thing. Visualize what you want and you're going to get it. If you're worrying, you know, then you're going to manifest negative things. It's like they say worrying is like praying for something you don't want to happen to happen. Um, it does seem like there's a falling out either with you and your relationship or you're going to hear news that somebody got divorced or somebody's breaking up or something like that, it seems. Um... It really feels to me, though, that this is sort of like a blessing. Ten of rods in reverse, this is like the load's lifted off my back. I don't have to carry this burden anymore. It's, it's, it, I'm feeling lighter because of this. I'm not feeling... There's no... Well, there's five of swords over here, but there's not a lot of cards of, like, swords and everything. So it also could just be maybe we've been separated for a long time and we're just going to finally get the divorce now. You know, that could that could be what it is now. Or maybe if you're the outsider looking in on this relationship, if this is somebody in your family or you're close to, you're kind of like, well, it's about time. You know, they've been at each other's throats for years or whatever the case may be. Now, usually Ten of Cups is a marriage and a, or a romantic partnership relationship, that sort of thing. It doesn't have to be, though. It can be any sort of relationship. It, it can apply to other things as well. And I do feel like the news is coming in Aries here. Or uh, this could also be like the deal breaker. The news comes in Aries because this news is sort of disappointing. Um, so, you know, we're still, we're going to be in Aries for the first half of the month or roughly till the 20th. I didn't look up the exact day I should have. And then we move into Taurus during the month of April. So it's going to be in the first part of the month, it feels like. Um, so the news is coming. There's some kind of breaking of the... Oh, this the other thing I was going to say. This could be like an ultimatum. You know... I gave you an ultimatum, either you do this or I'm leaving you. And they say, no, well, no, I'm sorry, I just can't do it. And so then you have to, you know, leave. But it really is for the best for everybody. It says it's a load lifted off your back. Um, this card is a card of stubbornness, like we're just never going to change. We're never going to, and you can argue this and argue this, and I'm right, I'm right, no, I'm right, I'm right, you know, and it's just this clashing, this clashing. So in reverse, at least that's going to stop. You know, that's the thing about it. At least the fighting is going to stop. Um, Seven of Cups says your dreams are coming true, and I feel like this is a very powerful time to start manifesting, start visualizing what you do want. Instead of focusing on all these scenarios about that other person, I think this is one of these cases of, what, you know, the saying of drinking the poison and expecting the other person to drop dead, because you really are just hurting yourself, and you're going to manifest and attract more negativity. This April is the month of the eclipses, our first eclipses of 2014. So this is a very powerful time for everybody. And the eclipses are much more far-reaching than your average new and full moon. They, they, ex they extend uh, up to six months. And it's very powerful energy. So Ten of Cups, Tens are endings. And then there's always going to be a new beginning. You know, if something ends, there's always a new beginning. And that's in everything. That's in numerology that's in cycles of life, that's just everywhere, that's just the way things work. It ends and then a new beginning uh, comes forward. You know what's standing out to me, the craziest thing? I keep looking at this card and this boot, 
is still standing out to me. So I have no idea what that would mean for the general population at, at large with the boot, but maybe it has something to do with, you know, something you're relating to. So maybe they wiped their dirty boots on the rug the last time or left those dirty boots laying around. It's like, that's it, I've had it. I mean, it could be something as trivial, trivial as that. Or uh, the boot. You know, that's another, that's a slang for, I'm kicking you out, I'm giving you the boot. I mean, maybe that's what it's saying. So maybe it's time to give somebody the boot here. New things are coming in over here, and I've got the Four of Cups here. So the Four of Cups not only is, you know, it's a number four, but the April is the fourth month. So I want to say before the month is through, something's going to pop through that hasn't been able to pop through here. Because you've been kind of, uh, this is kind of, I'm, I'm angry. You know, I'm angry at you, I'm arguing with you. And so maybe there's some things floating around, but you you can't hear or see or feel them because you're in this zone. So this is like opening, widening your spectrum, releasing this, whatever it is, or, you know, this could be like, what if this is your, if you're old enough to have a child who is um, married even, you know, what if your child's been fighting, fighting, fighting with their spouse and, and they're, you're getting pulled into it. See, it, it doesn't always have to be a relationship or somebody close to you and they're fighting, fighting, fighting and you're getting pulled into it. So they finally break up, and it's just like, whew, I don't, I'm not, I don't have to get pulled into it anymore. Whatever the case, that's the vibe I want to say. You don't have to get pulled into this anymore. And the sun in reverse always does say it is draining your energy. You know, the sun is your life force, prana, your chi, your ability to shine, your happiness, your joy, and it's being drained. You know, also because the ten of cups have children and the, the uh, on the card, and the sun has depicts a baby child on the card there. It could also say that all this fighting is just no good for the kids if there's kids involved. You know, it's just, it's draining them and it's damaging them. And it's better to be apart and happy and civil than it is to always be in this fighting. So, yeah, there's definitely some relationship coming to an end. It may be yours. It may be somebody that's close to you, but you're somehow involved and you're kind of, as a, you're watching it uh, and being, but getting pulled in or it's sucking your energy dry in some way, too. So this new offer comes in. I feel a new offer comes in before the month of April is over. This card often says you're skeptical about it, but it depends on what I see. Like, I'm focused, I'm drawn to this part. So if I'm drawn to this part of it, it this is the, uh, the offer is coming through. The extending, you know, we're extending an offer to you. We're extending, and with cups, sometimes it can be some sort of compromise, some sort of peace treaty. And so... It might you might have to let go of this. You not might you do have to let go of this. It's my way. I'm right. It's only my way, and there does have to be some compromise. You know what's standing out to me is these funny looking things on this tree, and uh, here in Ohio we have buckeyes that look like this. They're these green spiky things, but I guess this could also be maybe cactuses or something or, or green spiky plants. So something about that. Um, well, if it were a cactus, you know, it could be, you know, prickly. Things about, you know, you get a little prickly about things. So. But something about those green spiky plants were standing out to me. So, you know, it, again, I don't know how it could apply to everybody, but I, when I see things, I just spit it out and say it because it may apply to you. Okay, I want to move over to the astrology because there is a lot happening, as I mentioned earlier. We do have these eclipses happening. So what I'm going to do is turn the wheel to put Virgo on the Ascendant. And by the way, the Ascendant and the Rising Sign are the same thing. So if you know your Ascendant or Rising Sign, you definitely want to look at that video as well. Okay, so the first uh, eclipse is happening on April 15th, and it is a full moon eclipse, and it's happening in Libra. Now this is your second house of money. So this could be money involved with this stuff. Um, the, the full moon eclipse usually brings things to a head or ends things. So what I'm feeling from the cards is that we're ending the fighting. So this could apply in, you know, you could be fought. Well, if, when there's breakups going on, people do fight about money too. But you may just say, okay, go ahead and take the house. I don't even care anymore. I'm out of here. Or go ahead, you can have blah, 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 the thing you want. You know, let it go. Because the, the full moon in your second house is letting something coming to a head or releasing of something regarding money. I'm telling everyone because there's interesting pattern um, in this chart. I'm not going to get too deep into the astrology, but there's a Mercury square Pluto on the, f the first event on the 15th, and there's a Mercury trine Pluto on the next, the uh, other eclipse on the 29th. When you get Mercury and Pluto together, 
it's powerful energy for change, but Mercury square Pluto could definitely be arguments. And it's not a day to try to um, resolve anything. You could say something you regret or say something you could take back, and that applies for everybody. In your case, because it falls in your second house of money, it, you could say something that, that you can't take back like to your boss or somebody like that. So on the, around the April 15th day, let's not get into any altercations. Let's just walk away and be peaceful. Okay, then the second event, as the full moon takes things away, the new moon brings things in, and it's a very powerful manifester for everyone. Um, so in your case, it's going to be in the ninth house. So it's a new moon, it's on April 29th, it's a new moon eclipse in your ninth house. First thing that pops into my mind is a great day to go back to school or look into some kind of training course or something like that. Also, ninth house is travel. Booking some kind of, if you're planning a trip, booking a travel plan. If you are going to move, good day to be looking out to, for somewhere to move. Um, also, rule, rules foreign people from yourself. So you could have a benefit or a new beginning with somebody from a different culture th uh, than your own. Uh, and in the other point about the Mercury-Pluto, in this case, it's trining on the 29th. So trining means we can have harmonious talks. We can talk peacefully. Pluto, it's still going to be a death and a rebirth or a dramatic change. But with the trine energy, we're more likely to be able to talk things through, uh, make a peaceful resolution where everybody gets something of what they want. And also, this is all occurring in Earth. Your, your, your Virgo energy, that's going to fill that in because it's Mercury, Trine, Pluto in Taurus and Capricorn. And then the third sign is Virgo of the Earth sign. So it's Capricorn, Virgo, um, excuse me, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. So that's a trine. And it's it's not a, a grand trine for everybody, but it is for you only, actually, Virgo. So that could be a very positive day for you. If you can put off any final negotiations until we get to that 29th day, definitely avoid any kind of uh, confrontations on, on the uh, 15th because you could end up losing money on that. You might end up walking away as the loser in that in that deal. Okay, so that's a little glimpse into what it's like to have a reading with me. Uh, of course, when we do a personal reading, we get much more in depth, and I look at your chart, and we do the reading just based on you. I want to mention real quickly, several people were asking about my deck. The deck is called Hanson Roberts, H-A-N-S-O-N, -S Roberts, R-O-B-E-R-T-S. And um, I think I've been using it since around the rough, I'd say the late 80s, roughly sometime around there. Um, I like it. I like the scrolly Celtic key designs on the back. Um, and I like the illustrations. But uh, one of the big reasons I like this deck is its size. It's, it's nice. You can fit it in your hand. It's easy to put your hands around here to shuffle. It's like the size of a regular deck of cards. So that's another reason that I've stuck with it for all these years. I've probably had at least 10 of these decks that have, I've worn them out over the years. <laughs> Okay. Hey, I wanted to say thank you to everybody who's donating. If your donations makes it worthwhile for me to keep doing these free videos every month. And thank you for all the new clients that are booking readings with me. I'm really enjoying reading new and meeting new people. Um, thank you so much for sharing and liking and commenting on my videos and spreading the word. And that's very helpful to me and I really appreciate it. Uh, remember you are love and beauty incarnate. And this is Vicki Verley, the Rock and Roll Prophetess, and I'll speak to you soon. What is Organite? Originally discovered in the 1930s by Wilhelm Reich, organ energy, or etheric energy, is present in living things including the human body. Reich proposed that illness occurs when our etheric body is out of balance, and that positive organ energy could realign the etheric field, thus facilitating healing and balance of one's life force, chi or prana. It has since been scientifically proven that energy called piezoelectricity, meaning electricity resulting from pressure, is created by the compression of certain materials such as quartz crystals, wood, salt, sugar, ceramics, and bones. As the resin cures in an organite piece, it shrinks and compresses the organic matter contained within. The energy emitted creates a positive energy generator. You really can feel the energy coming forth from these pieces. Organite clears the air and neutralizes negative emotions as well as electronic clutter from our high-tech devices. 
Each organite piece is lovingly hand-created using intuitive pairing of materials to enhance and raise vibration and aid in ascension and a spiritual awakening. I use materials from nature, including the bark from a sacred willow for grounding and gold flakes to emulate the golden light basking down from the higher dimensions. Visit my Etsy shop for a wide selection of handmade organ pieces, especially designed for spiritual growth, including heart opening, chakra alignment and activation, and more. Visit www.organenergyflow.etsy.com to see more beautiful organ pieces. And remember, you are love and beauty incarnate.